anyway, I ended up making this contact. She delivered a speech uh, on one of the mornings of, of the conference, and she didn't have a lot of time to hang out because she was basically there to – she came up on the train. I mean, Geneva's about an hour and 20-minute train ride. So she came up on the train, delivered her speech, and then basically had to zip on back down to Geneva and continue her work day uh, in effect. So we didn't have a whole lot of time to hang out, but briefly talked to her about an idea that I had for sustainable food production, uh, which was the theme sustainable world. And so that's one of the things she touched on was food and energy and a couple of other things that the United Nations has really got to start changing the way they're thinking on how they tackle problems, which I thought was a very welcome kind of speech. The way she the way she presented it, so I'm like, well, what's the best way to one of the better ways to affect you know to, to really get the Venus Project on a larger stage or at least the ideas of the Venus Project would be to have the United Nations start implementing Venus Project style solutions, right, uh, to solve problems and not just you know pay it lip service or you know in the case of food which is what I what I wrote her about um, instead of buying food from multinational, super wealthy food growing bastards, uh, you know, that I think is half the problem to begin with, you know, how do you use that money in a more efficient, long-term way? Uh, so it's, you know, some people say they teach them sustainable farming or, or uh, things of that, na- things of that nature. Oh, I got to stop that. Anyway, <laughs> things like that. And so I, I think that's great maybe, you know, 100 years ago, but you've got that old adage, you know, give a man a fish, he eats for a day, teach a man a fish, he eats for a lifetime. I want to take that to the next level and say have technology fish for the man so he can do something better with his life. Right. <laughs> that's basically yeah, the definitely. next step. That's that's the Venus Project step, right? So, you know, don't don't worry about teaching them to farm old school style by raking up the dirt. And besides… If you look at a lot of these poor countries that are starving, they don't have arable land to begin with. The reason why they have a food problem is because they really can't grow anything where they are. It's either been it's either been ripped to shred because of hundreds of years of abuse by other nations coming in and basically just destroying the land, or they've done a good job of destroying it themselves with poor practices, bad politics, civil wars, and everything else. So they don't have quality landscape to begin with. So the only way to provide a sustainable solution, as far as I'm concerned, is the fully automated hydroponic farm facilities. So what I've done is she asked me to send her a paper or something. You know, she probably just intended for me to send her an email about what I was talking about. But you know, I don't just do that. <laughs> I I put together a seven-page report that basically illustrates the problem. Uh, and gives a solution set and uh, basically tells them, you know, I would like – if the UN really wants to do something – in fact, I can read it. Uh, I know you usually yeah, read – Yeah, actually, I have, a, I have a segment of the show set aside specifically for you to do that. Um, okay. Just waiting for you to, to – I actually added another half hour to the show while we were on here because – This is just to sure you you know, give people an idea of where I was coming from, but eventually they can read it as well. So uh, so here it is. It's called Solving the Hunger Crisis, Technical Solutions for Social Change, a Paper for United Nations Consideration by Douglas Millett, Space Shuttle Systems Engineer. Introduction. The hunger plight throughout the world is without question one of several major social concerns facing the world today. But, is what, but what is even more astonishing is that the 21st century seems to be stuck with 17th century thinking unable to mount a serious and sustainable solution set to permanently combat and eradicate this issue. The following information will showcase a solution set that will do just that, solve the hunger problems in the world once and for all. The problem. Although global food production is at an all-time high relative to the past, a strong disconnect exists between production and consumption capabilities for people who simply do not have the purchasing power to buy that which they need to survive. The fact that humans have allowed such an essential necessity for life to become so grossly mismanaged and profit-driven is a moral and ethical question for another time. But for the purposes of this paper, it's vital to note that our production capabilities are not the problem. Purchasing power, environmental flux, 
and arable land is the problem. For example, the following excerpt from the, a United Nations FAO report, Tajikistan Humanitarian Food Security Appeal 2008-2009, illustrates these issues. <clears throat> the people of Tajikistan are in urgent need of assistance to restore food and security following two years of unrelenting economic, environmental, and social shocks. Reduced agricultural yields combined with the global rise in food costs have left 2.2 million people food insecure. This situation has further eroded the asset base of already impoverished families. Currently, 53% of the population lives on less than $1.33 per day in U.S. dollars. Only 7% of the land in Tajikistan is arable. Already limited harvests have been affected by hail and reduced precipitation in 2006, drought through the spring and summer of 2007, and a severe cold wave, record high temperatures, and locust infestation in 2008. This is but one location in the world that is subject to these conditions, and there are many more which can be found on the FAO website, www.fao.org. But it doesn't have to remain this way if we employ a new way of production that is far more efficient and productive for the region it serves. Additionally, subsistence and traditional farming is an old world solution in a new world setting. The fact that many consider manual labor as a necessity for food production indicates a severe lack of technical knowledge. At some point, humanity must acknowledge that it has invented its way out of the need for human labor on many fronts, and there is no better proof of this than fully automated farming facilities. All right, so that was basically the introduction and the problem statement all on the first page. So it was very kind of quick, hard-hitting, you know, punchy in the face with, with the information kind of thing. So now we move on to um, <clears throat> the solution set. So I'm going to go through that. Fully automated solar wind-powered hydroponic farm facilities. Hydroponics is not a new solution option for producing food. But what is new are the advances in technology that enable this method of food production to be far more productive than traditional farming methods. Combine this with our knowledge of robotics and automation, and we have the capability to produce vast amounts of food with virtually no human labor requirement. And all of this can be done locally, decentralizing food production and drastically reducing shipping needs. This combination ensures that people can eat without having to toil in the soil for hours on end, freeing them to pursue other things, like acquiring educations to help advance their true potential, including learning about how their food production facility works and the technology behind it. The system I'm about to describe exists in parts right now, and I am currently in the process of making the rough blueprint of a facility that brings it all together as one holistic solution set to provide food for thousands of people at a time. This system can be scaled up, and as an example, I will show how this scaling can be implemented. First, let us cover the basics. <clears throat> Omega Garden. The Omega Garden system is what allows for the robust production of food with a drastically reduced energy and water requirement. Technical details of this system can be provided later if there is a desire to proceed with this idea. The cylindrical system provides a unique growing environment that the plants thrive in, causing them to grow double normal size without the addition of any chemicals. Gravity is one of the catalysts that causes this, because the rotating cylinders cause the plants to fight against gravity part of the time driving nutrients to the stems as the plants correct themselves against this unseen force. This works to create an environment suitable for naturally healthy and vibrant plant life, so much so that the plants also grow three to five times faster than normal, but with no negative size effects since the system is completely organic. Another catalyst is the center LED, light-emitting diode, low-energy lighting system that provides every plant in the cylinder with the same amount of adequate lighting. For the plants, it's always high noon on a beautiful sunny day with plenty of nutrient-rich water, which could be provided by a tilapia fish farm working within the facility. Place this system in an environmentally controlled building, and you set the stage for high yields in faster times than any traditional farming method is capable of providing. And since the system doesn't depend on soil and is indoors in an environmentally controlled building, it can be built and used anywhere in the world no matter the natural conditions the people are subject to. 